Hello students, we are going to discuss the geographical sources of information. Now, this is extremely important topic for your this course. Now, what is exactly the geographical information sources? It is a source of information which provide information about a place such as cities, town, lakes, river, forest, etc. regarding their location, distance description and other detail. So, basically what we are trying to look at the entire landscape of a particular place or a region. The examples are the distance between the cities, villages and talukas, the population size and the structure, the rivers, the oceans and the lakes and the restaurants of different cuisines. So, this is are some of the geographical information sources. Like for example, this picture is known to everybody. This picture, this is a geographical map of India, where you can see the mountainous locations, you can see the rivers, you can see the different kinds of river banks and you can also see the which are the different through which particular region or locations this particular place is associated with. So, this particular map gives you a complete picture of geography of India. If you look at the six geographical regions, it can it is shown in a color here that there are six of them are there like one is eastern India, you have the southern India, you have the northeast India, the northern India, the western India and the Hindi belt. So, these are the some of the six regions which are deep, six geographical regions which are depicted here. Now, when you talk about a particular geographical regions and all, there are couple of things which are extremely important as a library information science professional for you. Like for example, maps and atlases. Now, what is the most important thing you need to evaluate about the maps and atlases. Like for example, is authority, its currency because names keeps on changing, the revision policy, the encyclopedia information, the nationalism, the tropical approaches, the balance content, the quality of maps, the scale and projections, the topographical representation and the format. It also evaluation of maps, the couple of things which also get into like vernacular versus language of the country of publication like Florence versus Firenze or transliteration of names like Zreif and Zkraif. So, place name control, location of small towns, statistical data, subject access. So, these are some of the parameters of as far as the maps and atlases are concerned. Now, why librarian use geographical sources? Atlases and maps are the main source of geographical information in libraries. Librarians will not be able to answer all geographical questions because humanly it is not possible using the sources in their own collections in their state or region. Now, digital data are widely available and the number of electronic map products available via the web and on commercial CD-ROM like ready reference research, environmental analysis like climate related, historical studies, location findings. So, for different kind of geographical sources, the atlas and map is a extremely important ready reference for any researcher to start or begin its research of a particular place. So, he has to go for a particular type of atlas or a particular type of mat to begin his research. So, it is a part of his methodology itself. So, we need to understand that how librarians should be aware of all those geographical sources, so that they can facilitate to the right user to have the right kind of atlases and maps for it. Use of geographical information sources, it could be for current events, it could be for recreation, it could be for business. Now, when I am talking about current events, 
are one of the strongest reasons for maintaining up to date geographical sources such as information on yesterday's volcanic eruption, earthquake, human or physical disaster. Recreation it could be used for recreation purpose, they may simply be researching for leisurely or travel purpose. Therefore, a large segment of the population is interested in information, not only on local, state or national park, but also on cities and regions all over the world. Like for example, when we are you know traveling to different places for our recreation purpose, what we generally do? We try to you know look into different kinds of travelogues or travel guides to find out about that particular place, the all information we try to collect of that particular place. Then for business travel, the particular travelogue requires more information on cities and detailed information regarding subject such as what are the hostel, what are the restaurants or what are the cuisines are related to that. For the business purpose when the different kinds of people for a business travel they are traveling to different places. Now, there is a historical geography, we look into the geography aspect in much more detail. This category can be generally divided into genealogy, military history and the place name changes. Now, genealogy is if a patron wants to find the location of a place where a relative lived. For example, the user may want a map of the town when an ancestor lived in southern Germany in 1860. Military history, it has to do with information on particular wars that may have occurred in a special area. For example, the battle of Panipat, place name changes, it has to do with the patrons requesting information on countries whose names may have been changed. Okay. So, these are some of the historical geographical information sources which are extremely important for a librarian to understand. Now, there are different types of geographical information sources, let us see one by one. They are divided into three categories, maps, atlas and globes. The second one is gazetteers and the third one is travel guides. Now, when we talk about maps, what is a map actually? It is a two dimensional graphic representation of selected parts of the earth surface. You must have come across a large number of maps since your childhood. Now, these maps are divided into two major categories, please understand these are always categorized into two major parts. One is a general map and another is a specialized maps. So, we will see how these two maps are differentiated among each other. When I talk about general maps, physical maps, these are usually for the physical location and identification of countries, region, cities, towns, mountains, rivers, etcetera. So, it is giving you know the physical uh, descriptions of a particular place. Then you have political maps, these sources are important to know the political boundaries of the different countries, states, cities etcetera. So, basically these are the border lines, so it is extremely important. So, when you refer to a general map, you need to understand that which map based on the requirement of your user, you should be able to understand first what kind of map you, map you should look for, whether a physical map or is a political map. So, even if you a particular map or a atlas which is available in your library, you will see that there are two types of maps which are there side by side. So, one is a physical map and one is a political map. So, you can easily make a kind of a comparative of based on these two also. Then your specialized maps. Now, there are several categories of specialized maps like historical maps. These maps provide important developments in the history and indication development of war campaigns, adjustment of boundaries after vary, varying wars. Thematic maps, in these maps various symbols and colors to show the distribution of quantitative and qualitative information. For example, population density of a place, 
vegetation, weather maps, resources, qualitative. So, these are the different kinds of theme based basically thematic map is nothing but a theme based maps. Then is a topographic map, it shows the relationship of geographic features to one another. These maps can show details such as underground mines, coastal lines etcetera. So, this is a topographic differentiation of a map is given into this. Then there is route map, this shows the real routes, rail routes, bridges, rivers etcetera. Navigational maps, navigational maps used mostly by sailors and pilots, where basically it gives you the direction, because when they are sailing in the river, the ship is sailing, so this set the navigation compass. In the same way, when, some, when the pilot is there, I mean he is there in on the flight, so he shows, shows him the path, which particular place is the location to land or which is the route he has to follow our particular place. Then you have marketer map, shapes of continents are located at the poles and compressed at the equator. So, it is at the two poles. Online maps like MapQuest, Google Maps, Bing Maps, Yahoo Maps provide variable options for offer street level access for cities and towns. So, we will take in detail the what are the different kinds of online maps are available and how these maps are useful today in our day to day life. So, we will take one by one in details also. Now, let us talk about atlases, a book or a collection of maps. So, we have discussed in the previous slides on maps. Now, this is a book of collection of maps and geographical information that includes pictures or tables and charts. Now, when you talk about an atlas, it is divided into three major categories. You have general atlas, you have subject atlas, you have road atlases. So, you need to understand, so there are general atlas, subject atlas, road atlas. The types of atlases now we will see it in detail, like for example, general atlas. It may contain maps on a variety of topics such as climate, population, economic activities and environment. The time comprehensive atlas of the world like for example, Hammond standard world atlas, atlas of the universe, atlas of western civilization. Then we come to subject atlas, geographical maps showing changes or activities over time such as borders, military campaigns, exploration and cultural differences. For example, world atlas of birds, human anatomy atlas, Hammond standard world atlas, atlas of world history. So, these are basically subject atlas. Then we come to road atlas, it contains maps that show major highways and secondary roads for geographical areas. For example, the national geographic atlas of the world, in fact this is an extremely important document for any library should have, the national geography atlas of the world, Rand McNally road atlas, Hamlin's road atlas of Australia, Europa auto atlas road atlas of Europe. So, these are some of the road atlas which shows that different paths or different national highways or secondary roads or by lanes, these are all depicted into that with their length, breadth and every details so all descriptions were all given into it. Now, we will see here different kinds of atlases which you can see here which we have just discussed now. So, you can see these are some of the pictorial depictions of like Hammond standards world atlas, then there is a atlas of world history, then road atlas you can see there is a picture, then there is a atlas of the world, then you see this is a world atlas of the birds and this is a large scale road atlas of the Britain, this is a Britannica world atlas which is very famous and this is a world atlas here which you also can see from Hammond and there is a another road atlas also here. So, these are the different categories of atlases, one is general atlas, one is a subject atlas, another is your road atlas. When we talk about solar atlas, this is a very interesting example. See, this is a solar atlas of India, means if you want to see the 
where, where is the direct normal solar resource is coming in, so in different states. So, you can easily depict it in the, in the atlas. So, accordingly you know geographical scientists, environmental scientists, climate scientists, they do their research work based on these kinds of specialized atlases. These are subject specific atlases which are on a very micro thing. So, at, so and you can see the where exactly this particular legend here, it shows where exactly the uh, what we call it the luminous intensity or the solar intensity is high which particular place and according to the degree of temperature it is all given here. So, this is an extremely important a uh, solar atlas of India. This is an hills and plateaus of Gujarat. So, you can see the hills and plateaus of Gujarat is very clearly depicted in this particular atlas. So, in this is India's map and in the India's map you can see the, the Gujarat part is highlighted here and then in this Gujarat part the depiction of this entire atlas has taken place here in Ted. This is a petroleum reserves in India, which are the places where basically the petroleum is available. So, this is an extremely important like Vindhya basin or in Rajasthan basin or in North Indus basin where exactly the prospective basins and which are the other basins where basically and where the and the red lines which you see here it is nothing but basically the gas pipelines. So, a total India's map is given view and overview of the petroleum reserves of India. Then we come to globe, a globe is a spherical representation of the earth, it can represent surface features directions and distances more accurately than a flat map which you see in a different atlas. Now, physical globe is there, although physical globes emphasize natural land features and the features of the bottom of the sea, whereas political globe is slightly different. It shows the nations of the world in a variety of colors as well as other features of civilizations like locations of the cities. So, this is what physical globe and a political globe. Then another component is gazetteer. A gazetteer is a list of geographical places that do not include maps, just descriptions. The list are compiled in alphabetical order with information about locations such as towns, mountains, etcetera. This source gives specific information about indicate location by latitude and altitude. The types of gazetteers are two types, locational gazetteer and descriptive gazetteer. Let us take one by one. Locational gazetteer, you see these are the examples of location like Arizona Atlas and the gazetteer. Gazetteer of the Lahore district, then your international oil mill superintendent association gazetteer. So, these are from a general to a very specific descriptive gazetteers are there. Descriptive gazetteer, this is a very important document which you will even find in your website too. And this is called descriptive gazetteer, it is a handbook of Britain with descriptive gazetteer. This gazetteer gives you information, but usually with maps, the brief history, the commodity production and the populations. So, please remember this is an extremely important uh, an example for you like road book of Britain with descriptive gazetteers. So, this is one of the examples of it. Then comes to a very important component is travel guides or guide books you are very popular about it. Like guide books or travel guide is a book of information provides detailed description of places and geographical facts plus the maps which are depicted. Now, travel guides can also take the form of travel websites and provide factual up to date information on cities and countries and also about the history and culture of any place in the world. Like for example, take an example of Great Lakes Guidebook, Alaska Travel Guidebook, Travel Guide of Lonely Planet, which is very popular these days. So, these are some of the travel guides and guidebooks which are available. So, basically whenever a person is traveling, suppose you are working in an institution or an organization, someone wants to travel to a particular destination. So, what is the solution for him? So, the first solution is he pick up, picks up a guide book or a travel guide books and all 
and he gets in a nutshell the entire information of that particular place. So, this is extremely important for, uh, for any researcher to go for that whether he is into a business or a recreation or whatever type of visit traveling he is thinking of he need to consult a travel guide because that particular place gives him a entire gives him the information of the entire place. So, it is extremely important for him. Then these are some of the examples of you know guidebooks. You can see the city map guidebooks and all these are some of the pictures are depicted here. And nowadays which is very popular is even these kind of uh, guidebooks are also available in the mobile. So, whenever a person is traveling see either he has referred the same guidebook in the you know some library sources and all or the institution or organization must have provided the entire information or it is available even in the website also. The entire travel guide those details are available to him in a ready reference matter to him in the form of a mobile. So, this is very important. So, these are some of the new components which are slowly coming up as far as the you know travel guides are concerned. This is very important the travel guide of India. Okay, so, we will see like for example, any person who wants to visit to any of the countries whether he wants to visit some of the people who are coming from say may, may be want to visit to Rajasthan or to wants to go to Agra or to see the Taj Mahal and all or to different other you know oceanic places. So, for him travel guide is the source. So, travel guides provide him which is the best place when he can visit that place. What would be the climate? what kind of clothes he should carry. So, you know lot of information what is the type of people are there, what are their restaurants and cuisines are available, what kind of sightseeing places he should visit, which are the locations, even some of the road distances are given in it, what would be the best means of traveling to that place, whether he is traveling through you know through airline or through ship or through road. So, all those details are given into those travel books and all. So, extremely important when a for a for a any stakeholder when he is going to a particular place he should you know refer to one of the travel guides of that particular location. This is a very interesting lonely planet they brings out an entire a handy reference book every year and these informations get updated almost every year. The, this book gives you in concise it gives the information of entire India and the places wherever you are visiting it gives a glimpses of that particular places in a nutshell and it is extremely important for any visitors who are traveling from abroad to carry this particular book. Then you have in many of the tourism what we call tourism centers they are providing a this kind of a handout. It is a basically nothing but a pocket handout because this a kind of a planner shape uh, uh, a way handout which folds into multiple folds and you can keep it in a pocket and gives you the entire informations of a particular place. This is a network of the Delhi metro network. You can see the roads and everything. Then comes your geographical information. A GIS is a computer based capable of assembling, storing, manipulating and displaying geographical reference information. Data identified according to their locations. It was discovered by Tomlinson in 1998 with the leader of Canadian geographical information system. So, this is a setup of a geographical where hardware, software, people, data, network procedures are required as far as the GIS is concerned. This is a sample of a GIS maps or a particular region the different locations and with the help of that one can easily find out that what this particular location is. Now, it is talks about geography, cartography, computer aided design and computer graphics. Now, it can be used even in the library field that you can use the GIS like user education, systematic shelving, detail about location of library users, mapping of book suppliers that can also be used. This is an example of a GIS arc map which is used in the library to locate a various place. So, this kind of an advanced software can also be used for the landscape of a library. This is the first internet mapping site which you can see here which is a pictorial demography was given into it. This is a town and country planning where the town and the country how they are planned with the help of a geographical information system. Now, this is a GPRS which is very popular these days that even the mobile if you write your destination from the starting 
to the end point it will show you a complete path how you should travel to that place it will show you all the entire directions and all this is a entire kind of a gprs systems you can have a look at it that how this things it's a dynamic thing and in your mobile it can have this kind of changes also and shows the different locations now there are various gis journals which are available in the library cartography gis related and all these are specialty journals on gis laws grass clippings gis europe these are regular gis papers like cartographica cartography and gis computer geosciences ieee and all these are occasional papers on gis cartographic perspective journal of cartography and all these are online geographical sources which every librarian should know like periodical historical atlas of europe geography iq world atlas library of congress map collections university of arkansas center for advanced spatial technology map machines us geographical survey so these are the entire resources which are available in the online so what we would like to tell you geographical in sources of information is an extremely important component for any organization library so only thing is that you should know who is your stakeholder and you should have all this kind different kinds of sources available whether in online form or in the virtual form it should be available and you should be aware of it you should try to explore and see different places these are very interesting to read also to know about these particular places and all so whenever a user is you know approaching you with a particular informations he wants to know about a particular state particular district particular taluka or a particular village and all you should be able to help him out to find out the right kind of information about that what are the different kind of topography is there what are the different kinds of culture of that places what would be the male female ratio of that literacy ratios are there different kinds of specialized maps as we have seen these are also available in those places so it is extremely important for uh, researchers to understand that kind of subject thematic maps or atlases sometimes the librarians have to play a little pragmatic role here the library professionals have to at that time do a little bit of hand holding with the researchers and to tell them that for such kind of information suppose he is looking for a particular type of topography so you can he can easily tell that person that you please visit to this particular place and get all your information related related to that the geography of that particular area so that's extremely important so i would suggest that each of these online geographical sources printed sources you should keep on updating in your library and you should be well aware of your library so that you can provide and facilitate a better information service to all types of research scholars who are visiting to your organizations institutions etc thank you